Genesis chapter 10, verses 6 through 10 says, And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim, and Phut, Phut and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Zeba and Havilah, and Sabta, and Ramah, and Sabtika, and the sons of Ramah, Sheba and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, Even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, or Babylon, Tower of Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalne, and the land of Shinar. Okay? And Genesis chapter 11 also talks about that too, verses 1 through 9. How the earth at Babylon, via the Tower of Babel, because all, all kindreds and nations and tongues and, and uh, everybody spoke one language. And they were trying to build a one world government. Which is the precursor to what is trying to be built currently. And since uh, they were all trying to overthrow God and his system. God split them up. And he confounded everybody's languages. And so that's where you get all the languages, the tongues of today. Whatever, whatever your native tongue is, it comes from God confusing <clears throat> the original language of Hebrew into all different sorts of languages that we have today. So Babylon was formed after God. Then we have Jesus Christ's death on the cross. Jesus Christ is God's son, only begotten son, okay? And he shed his blood on the cross to pay for your sins as a practicing witch, if you're a lost witch and you're watching this. And uh, <clears throat> John 3.16 is the famous verse that everybody loves to say, you know, that everybody loves to corrupt and, and twist. But John 3.16 says, "God for God so loved L-O-V-E-D. Loved. It does not say God loves. It said God loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Okay? So remember, God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to pay for your sins. And through his shed blood on the cross, uh, that is the only way you can be saved and go to heaven when you die. That is the only way. And uh, <clears throat> then after his death on the cross, um, boy, I'm really messing this up now. Then you have the formation of Wicca, or witchcraft by another name. Okay, and we've already gone through most of the historical facts already at this point. And, um, but just to name a few, a few key people of your movement, Maria Von Etter from the mid 19th century to the early 20th century. She was a faith healer, evangelist, and a trance evangelist. And then she influenced Amy Semple McPherson, who was the 20th century, 20th century's most amazing faith healer. Hmm. How about that? Then she influenced, uh, the Jesuits girl by the name of Catherine Kuhlman because the Jesuits, the Society of Jesus, trained her and uh, helped her to infiltrate and, and subvert Christian churches, as they like to call it. And she was a faith healer. And of course, this has also influenced a certain Hollywood, <clears throat> I mean, Hollywood actress by the name of, uh, or even musician, I forget what her position is, Katy Perry. You know, from what I've learned that the Lord has shown me thus far, uh, Katy Perry was born into a Pentecostal charismatic family. And from what I understand, she's probably being groomed right now as we speak to be the next faith healer. So that is, that is the reality of your so-called old time religion. Your old time religion does not predate God. God predates your religion, if you're a witch. Okay? And, uh, <clears throat> last, I want to, to let you know that 
Catherine Kuhlman and Amy Semple McPherson were the leaders of the charismatic, that's my term for charismaniac or charismatic Catholics. Charismatics. Uh, actually, the Lord put it in my head, and, and I love the, the term, so <laughs> charismatic. Um, those two women, witches, I should say, led this movement, okay? So that's another uh, origin of your religion. And uh, the last historical fact of your religion is the sign of the devil's music. And to you witches out there, you know what the devil's music is. You just don't call it that. It's called rock music. And it comes in forms of CCM, pop culture, you know, pop culture music of different forms. Uh, but mainly, you know, this all goes back to rock and roll. And rock and roll is Adele's music. And so, and how is that the case? Well, because the rhythm of rock and roll casts a spell on all those who hear it. And what is a, what is an, a very, very uh, noteworthy aspect of witchcraft? Casting spells, as we heard earlier. Hmm, how about that? So rock and roll is one of your main... Uh, spell casting methods of your religion. Hmm. Interesting. So, the fourth section is, is, uh, what are all the different tentacles of Wicca or witchcraft? Stay. Here we are. All the different tentacles of witchcraft. Hmm. We have illumination slash evolution because the whole concept of evolution stems from illumination. You know, man gets better with time as he's enlightened to know more about different species and how they uh, originate and whatnot, and that supposedly. Uh, everything came from a big bang, you know, um, which is a big bunch of lies and nonsense. Um, you have magic, otherwise known as spells, such as Nazi magic, and the Catholics created Nazism. The Roman Catholic Vatican whore created Nazism, so uh, that's not even, that's nothing to, to, to worry about. I mean, as a Bible even Christian, when you see Nazi magic, just remember it goes back to Catholicism. Voodoo, Santeria, Macumba are all related to magic and spells, and especially esoteric arts. You have rock music, as we said before, you have elevated heel shoes because uh, <clears throat> you're on your tippy toes and as you'll see in a later study, I'm not going to get into it right now, but it is a form of esotericism. Face painting and makeup. Again, condemned in the Bible. I'm not going to go into a long, drawn-out study of that right now, but face painting makeup is, an, is a form of esoteric arts. Attire of an harlot, as we read early. Esoteric art. Military drill and ceremony. D&C, as it's shortened to esoteric art. You say, what? Well, you'll find out. I'll let you know in the future what that means. Uh, not in this study, a future one. Selling your soul to Satan through blood packs and covenants. You know, that's a tentacle of witchcraft. All these things you see here is witchcraft by another name. Yoga. For example, Tantra yoga. That's uh, in certain types of, of uh, it's it's a form of witchcraft. Initiation via infant baptism. I speak from experience because I was baptized as an infant into the Lutheric, the emphasis 
that's the term that the Lord gave me a while ago for Lutheric or Lutheran Catholicism, Lutheran Catholics. And so I was initiated into witchcraft as an infant and I didn't even know it. And so when the Lord saved me, he placed it upon my heart to write a very short and concise business letter to my uh, Catholic cult building in Cass County, Iowa to tell them, get rid of my ties with your satanic organization. And they did. And uh, ever since then, the Lord has blessed me tremendously, spiritually speaking, because I'm no longer under that yoke of bondage to the Catholic whore. Chanting or speaking in unknown tongues, which is a tentacle of the charismatic movement. And of course, you know, the charismatic movement includes female pastors, easy believism gospel, you know, just believe and receive. The Pentecostal prosperity gospel and the faith healer movement all stems from the charismatics, charismatics. You have feminism, gender confusion, female pastors, all these different tentacles as you can see. And of course, witches are the leaders of the pro-choice abortion movement. How about that? Hmm. Why? Because it goes back to blood packs, covenants, uh, sacrificing children. Wicca, or witchcraft, is tied with Fry Maurer, Freemasonry, by another name. As we have been talking about here and there throughout the study, Hinduism is a tentacle of witchcraft because of karma, ahimsa, ahimsa, which means, you know, uh, just leave the person alone because fate will determine his or her future after they die. Fatalism is the heart of Hinduism. Rebirth and reincarnation, which ties back to karma and all the other parts of Wicca and Hinduism. Cannibalism, vampirism, because when you consume blood, you consume life, as the Bible says. Bloodletting and rituals, witchcraft. Sadism, as we said earlier. Occult meditation, mediumship, monism. Phoenix bird, the concept of the phoenix, you know, being slain and then rising again from the ashes. That stems from animism, pantheism, excuse me, and also dualism and shamanism relate to witchcraft. You have child pornography and other perversions and other types of pornography. You have, of course, Roman Catholicism, the Vatican, the Horror on Seven Hills in Rome, Italy. It's a type of witchcraft. Because uh, if you study Roman Catholicism, it's very, very, very close related to witchcraft in various forms. We're not going to get into that right now. Society of Jesus, i.e. the Jesuits, their mysticism. Witchcraft. ESP, or psychic, as we said earlier. Witchcraft. Satan's perversion of what God does. You know, God discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so Satan tries to pervert that and say, I'm going to call it ESP, you know, and, and term people as psychics. Spiritism or spiritualism, form of witchcraft. Pharmaceuticals, also known as street drugs. You say, huh? Well, let me just give you a historical fact about pharmaceuticals. Back in the Victorian era of England, uh, when pharmaceuticals are, or drugs are starting to be developed, and created by the chemists, uh, eventually once it became mainstream and widely accepted by the populace, it became, pharmacies became known as high street uh, drug stores. So therefore, ironically, pharmaceuticals are tied in, are otherwise known as street drugs. They're legalized street drugs. Um, not gonna get into that right now, but telekinesis, parapsychology, Forms of witchcraft. Catherine Kuhlman, as we said earlier, Amy Semple McPherson, Maria von Etter, all three, you know, tied in with it with witchcraft. These two, Catherine Kuhlman and Amy Semple McPherson, were witches themselves. You know, ties back to the charismatic Pentecostal movement. The Book of Shadows, tentacle witchcraft. Franklin Credit Union cover up, as we said earlier, tied in with witchcraft. Uh, Church of Satan. The high priests in your religion have to study the satanic Bible from the Church of Satan, therefore tied back to witchcraft. Aleister Crowley, 
has influenced some of your authors, and most of his major books are noted and publicized on your bibliographies. J.R.R. Tolkien, John Ronald Rule Tolkien, hmm, famous witchcraft author. C.S. Lewis, Lewis, his books are required reading before witches and occultists are allowed to join a coven. How about that? Hmm. Witchcraft. <clears throat> the very definition of it is mind control. Mind control is witchcraft. You have Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum tying back to the Isle of Man in England, as we saw earlier. And then you have trans astrology, Hegelian dialectic, this white versus black concept. I'm a good witch. You know, I don't do black magic. That's for Satanists or that's for, you know, whoever. Well, that's a form you're basically following and proving the Hegelian dialectic because eventually white versus black magic leads to gradual acceptance in the mainstream society of each country as being acceptable in various forms. Babylon, paganism, <clears throat> tie back to witchcraft. Age of Aquarius, otherwise known as the New Age, witchcraft. Worships fornication, most certainly does, and also allows and exacerbates the agenda of sodomy or gender confusion, just like feminism leads to gender confusion in female pastors. Psychology, one of your most famous uh, <clears throat> proponents and adherents of witchcraft is was Carl G. Jung. You know, the MBTI personality test, form of witchcraft. Satanism, Judaism, SRA, satanic ritual abuse, demonology, and uh, witchcraft. These include a whole bunch of other topics that we're not going to talk about right now because that would draw out the study. But let me just show you another diagram. You have Okay, here's the relation between <clears throat> four different types, well, three official types of occultists, but they're all occultists by different names. You have your main, you have your main group of occultists, your general category. Then, New Agers overlaps with witches. And yet, Satanists are also witches in the Church of Satan, as we saw earlier. Female Satanists are witches. But yet, not all witches are Satanists. So, this is kind of a rough drawing of this. But you have two different charts now that tell you the tentacles of witchcraft in our, t in our world today. And uh, <clears throat> let me just show you the fallacy of witchcraft and its lies. have a completely true statement. But yet anytime you have premises that are, you have a true premise and as you see anywhere from one, tr one lie in otherwise true statements to all out, all statements are false, uh, you cannot have a true statement in the end. Anytime you see excuse me, you're told a group of statements of truth and lies mixed together, you cannot have a true statement. You cannot have a true argument. <clears throat> Something like, uh, God is omnipresent. That's true. God is omniscient. That's true. 
Uh, God is omnipotent. That's true. God gives wisdom liberally to all men and does not upbraid it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing James 1 through 5 for the sake of time, but all those four statements I just told you right here, these are all true and are found in the King James Bible. This stuff over here, this is what witchcraft does. It mixes truth with lies and sometimes just flat out lies. And so you're, you're given false information. You can't trust it. You can trust every single thing in this Bible, the King James Bible, because it is God's perfect, infallible, inerrant word. It is 100% prophetically true. You can trust it. So, John 8.44, just as a reminder, it perfectly describes what I'm trying to explain here by this simple logical drawing. John 8.44 says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So you see, Satan likes to mix truth with lies. Even though he knows scripture very well, Satan in his pride, he tries to overthrow God. So he says, I'm going to mix some lies in with truth in a very subtle form to see if I can overthrow people and get them off course. <clears throat> and that's what your leaders do. Every single type of occultist whether they're in a leadership role or not, they don't they they know truth and lies in various different forms, but they don't have absolute truth right here. They don't understand the King James Bible because what's written in here is spiritually discerned for those who have come to God as a repentant contrite sinner for salvation and said, Lord, please save me from my sins. God, please save me from my sins. You know, I can't make it on my own. So, to all you practicing witches out there, you think, well, you know, nobody can possibly understand the Bible. Sure you can. If you come to God as a repenting, contrite, broken sinner for salvation and set aside your self-righteous pride in what you're doing, you can understand this Bible. I can tell you from experience as a lost woman, when I was lost, uh, I tried to read the NIV, the early 80s edition of the NIV, I couldn't understand a word, let alone memorize it. When the Lord Jesus Christ saved me from my sins in October of 2011, as a completely broken sinner who had nothing to live for until he saved me, ever since that day, he's been showing me from his word just how everything in this world lines up with his word right here, the King James Bible. That's something that your leaders cannot say. How about the fact that, uh, um, <clears throat> let's get into the question of why and how did you join the occult? This is the last and final section of the study. So keep these drawings in mind. This one right here, because everything, no matter what your position is, you're an occultist by another name. Uh, <clears throat> How about, uh, was it, was it pragmatic reasons that you joined the occult? You know, was it somebody you loved and trusted, you respected, admired in the community? Is that why you joined the occult? You know, um, you know, I can't say for sure any, I can't, I don't know exactly what happened in my background as a lost woman, but, uh, there are some very, very interesting things tying up and lying, uh, lining up within my past that are related to the study at hand. And I can't tell you what it is yet because I don't quite know all the details. The Lord is still revealing things to me at this point. But um, <clears throat> from what I do know, 
there are some definite tie-ins to the topic of witchcraft from my past, from my family members. Um, my next question for you, for you practicing witches out there is, why do you believe that the information you've been told by your leaders is true? Because, you know, you can't possibly know that all the information you're learning or you've been given is completely true. Because obviously if they reveal that to you, you'd get out of the system in a heartbeat. And also along those lines, what person or book led you to believe that your beliefs that you've been told and that you've, that you've gained over time are true? What are they based upon? You know, are they based upon this type of things, a series of truth and lies? How do you know that what you're told is true? How do you know it hasn't been complete lies? And even if you ask your leaders, you know, what do you mean by such and such? If you start asking too many questions, are your leaders going to tell you the truth? No, because I've tried that. When I was lost, I tried to ask questions, but nobody told me a thing. In fact, they threatened to shut me up in various ways. Um, <clears throat> how about your claim that all God wants to do is to keep you from growing or having fun? I can tell you that this is a lie because when the Lord Jesus Christ saved me in October of 2011, not a day has gone by that I haven't had fun learning absolute truth. I love learning absolute truth every day. That is the one thing that, that wakes me up when I'm, when I'm tired and haven't had a good night's sleep. Absolute truth wakes me up. I love learning about the truth. And, and uh, you know, if you get saved, you'll, you'll probably end up saying, I'm having fun learning, uh, learning truth every single day. Because it is seriously fun to learn about truth every single day of your life as a saved Christian. How about your claim that uh, the King James Bible has been tampered with so much by old monks or councils that what it says about God is valueless? Well, that right there is a lie from the Roman Catholic whore because the only system outside of, outside of Satan himself messing with it, the only system that messes with the King James Bible, God's perfect word, mind you, is the Roman Catholic core in Rome, Italy, otherwise known as the Vatican and Mystery Babylon. And she has corrupted the Bible in so many different perversions I've lost, account, I've lost count already. You claim that the Bible can only be understood by sorcerers and adepts in your system as a Kabbalistic book. And yet, you claim that born-again Christians can't understand the King James Bible. Well, you've already gone through this, but I can tell you from experience that, uh, you know, lost sinners cannot understand the Bible very well because everything in there is spiritually discerned. The natural man cannot understandeth the King James Bible. I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, I don't want the verse memorized completely word for word, but uh, the point is, is um, <clears throat> lost sinners can't truly understand God's word because it's a spiritual but scientific book. Born again King James Bible believing sinners can and do understand God's perfect word, the King James Bible. How about your last claim that the deity represented in the Bible is actually minor tribal desert deity and your gods in various names and forms, supposedly, of witchcraft or the new age um, are much older and more powerful. And so thus it makes sense to serve them in your terms was, as we learned earlier, God was, was and is before your system, before your religion. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, okay? He is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. He knows everything he sees, everything he's everywhere at the same time. So that right there is a flat out lie, you know? There's nobody more powerful than the Lord Jesus Christ because if you if you pay attention to your rituals and your spell binding uh, uh, items and, and talismans and everything, at best, your spells work 50% of the time. And why is that? 
because of a verse in Ephesians chapter 6 that actually explains why your spells do not work all the time. And maybe 50% at best. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. Satan is the father of your system. And because of the fact that your spells only work maybe half the time, it's because God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Godhead, he, he has power over Satan. Satan was created by God. Okay, and as we read throughout the study thus far, uh, Satan tried to overthrow God and because he wanted to be like God and he wanted to be God. And so the whole point is, is that uh, <clears throat> God controls everything. I can tell you from experience that uh, lost sinners tremble at, at, uh, at God's power. God can use anybody he wants to for his purposes. You know, God used my lost mother a few years ago after he saved me, after the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. He used my lost mother to prophesy one day and say, you'll make a good wife. You know, that was God speaking through a lost woman. You know, Satan is not omnipresent. And Satan takes his orders from God. So keep that in mind. Why, another question is, why would you believe your authors? First of all, they're imperfect. You know, your occultic authors don't have absolute truth right here. They're going to mix truth and lies. So why would you believe them? Why not believe the King James Bible? God's perfect word. It's perfect. It's 100% prophetically accurate and true. How do you know that your authors aren't... Uh, how do you know that they're giving you truthful? How do they claim to have truth? Where are they getting it from? Um, <clears throat> your authors at times will state what they think is true, but is actually mistaken. Again, you're on the risk of lies and truth being mixed together. Another factor in, you know, why would you believe your occultic authors in the, in the beginning is the author blended truth with lies and her mistakes either ignorantly or willfully. How can you tell the difference between the two? Are they deliberately lying to you or are they, or are they lying to you out of ignorance because they don't know any better? And lastly, uh, you know, if, if your occultic authors willfully lie to you, that's called beguiling you, and that's called disinformation by another term. So uh, again, you cannot mix truth and lies and expect to have a true statement. It's always going to come out to be false, logically speaking. And the King James Bible is a very scientific book. So you have at least a 75% chance of being misinformed as an occultist of any sort. Another question is, have you personally seen your so-called original documents, original uh, source documents from the, from the uh, second and third century? Have you personally see them, seen them? And uh, I should say not because you would have to go back to that time. And it's impossible to go back in time to see those things. Next question is, why do you deny hell's existence? Um, do you have any proof to deny that? Or are you just simply regurgitating what your leaders have told you because they want to keep you in bondage to your system? And lastly, why are you afraid of disobeying Satan, the father of your system? Satan is the father of lies as we learned earlier. Why are you afraid of disobeying it? Satan takes his orders from God. God knows everything. God knows everything about you right now as a practicing witch, if that's what you are. Why would you want to continue in a system that keeps you in bondage because of fear? You know, threats of, of saying to you, if you know what's good for you, you'll shut up. I've been there. I was in bondage as a lost woman years ago until the Lord Jesus Christ saved me and got me out of whatever happened in my past. I don't even know what all happened yet. 
you know, but the Lord is, is revealing to me slowly but surely over time what will happen to me outside of being initiated into witchcraft through Roman Catholic Lutheranism. Lutheric. And last but not least, there are two types of rulers that sum up what you're a part of if you're lost and watching this. You have man over man, which leads to sin. That's essentially the bottom line of your system right here. Man ruling over man. And these are all the different forms of witchcraft that the Lord has shown me thus far. And you have, as a second type of ruler, you have The Lord, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ over man, rules over man, once man comes to him as a repentant, contrite, and broken sinner, and for salvation. He cries out to God to save him from his sin. That's what I did when I got saved in October of 2011. I cried out to God so many times in my lost life. I don't even know how many times. I said, why won't anybody tell me the truth? I just want to know the truth, you know. Why won't anybody tell me? Where is the truth? What is the truth? I remember asking questions like that. And, uh, you know, in all the times, in all different types of situations, I cried out to God for help. God is nigh unto all, all who call upon him. Okay? He will, he will help you if you cry out to him. All you have to do, if you're a lost witch right now, if you're an occultist of any sort, Cry out to God for wisdom and help. That's all you got to do. Out of a pure heart, cry out to God for help. He is the only way you can be free of your system. Nobody will tell you that in your system because they want to keep you in it. So what happens when you come to God as a repentant, contrite, broken sinner? This is what happens. When you come to God as a repentant, contrite, broken sinner for salvation, and salvation, I don't mean going to church or going to, you know, a building that calls itself a church. I'm talking about a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking worshiping God in spirit and in truth. This is the ultimate source of absolute truth, the King James Bible. God wants his children, his spiritual children, so to speak, Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing, born-again Christians, to worship him in spirit and in truth, okay? Bible-building attendance is not, is not a, um, is not related to that. So, <clears throat> here's what happens when you come to him for salvation. It means... When you come to God as a repentant, contrite, broken sinner for salvation and ask him to save you from your sins because you deserve to go to hell for all eternity if it wasn't for him. When you do this and you come to him, you know, and you, and you just lay everything on the line and say, I can't get to heaven on my own accord or my own self-righteous, pride, prideful merits, it will lead to a changed life. Let me read to you the verse that that describes that to a T. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. A very, very good verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. A changed life. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> so this is your ticket out of the system. Repentant, contrite, broken spirit. Coming to God as a, as a broken sinner saying, 
witchcraft doesn't doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't save me from my sins. I know I'm a sinner. Whatever the case may be that you that you say to God when if you if you come to him for salvation. Whatever words you use are fine with him. He knows your heart. But real salvation via a personal relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will lead to a changed life. I can tell you from experience. Um, the little I do know about my past, I was a, I was a budding feminist. I was an athlete. Um, I started to hate men because of the way that they treated me. And, uh, but ironically, it went back to how I was dressing. If you dress like a man, you will be treated like a man. I could go on and on about my past, but if you listen to my testimony from Lutheranism to salvation, you'll understand what I'm talking about and you'll understand my background. So, uh, as a final word, if you're lost, whether a witch or a Satanist or an occultist of any sort, and you're looking for the truth, please, I, I'm, I'm asking you to, to listen to the salvation message on, on the main page of this channel. Please watch the salvation message. It shows you how to come to God as a repentant, contrite, broken sinner for salvation.